this holy month of Safat, the month of the Divine Cave. SubhanAllah man huwa alim al hakim where Allah grant from the realities of an alim, ancient and ilm of Allah Allah's ancient knowledges and that ancient knowledge its perfection is with hikmah. That to have a hikmah with knowledge so that the soul is balanced and the individual is balanced. Alhamdulillah that every reality has a Muhammadan haqqaiq and the fountainhead of all knowledges, the pinnacle of all knowledges is the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Uh, this way of the seven sleepers and we arrive now at the understanding of them seeking to enter the cave. And on the journey of the cave they were accompanied by their dog. And we've said many times, they're always a reminder for myself, the dog that followed them was and had a love for them. And as a reality the dog was following and they were inspired to go to a cave and their concern was that, what are we going to do with the dog? If anyone sees the dog it will give us away and this tyrant will come after and kill us. So they began to shoot the dog that, go away and the dog had a love for his master. And they began to throw pebbles and difficulty towards the dog to make it to go away so we understand you have to go. And as they're throwing and the dog is still coming, not paying attention because of the love that the dog has for his master. Until they were throwing and Allah inspired within the dog. Means then immediately the dog got from four, went up to two legs and began to talk to them. Said, doesn't matter how much you're going to throw stones at me, I will not stop in accompanying you. And perchance if you allow me to accompany you, I will be a guard for the worshipness that you are about to do for Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Means then is an immense reality. So immediately they understood that this is now, this is not uh, something normal, this creature is being inspired to guard them. And in our lives has many different understandings. One is that anytime we're on a path to Allah and on a path of realities, the seeker must be aware that everything is in this ocean of submission. Everything has an isharat, a sign for the seeker that you're going to surrender yourself to Allah you have to remind yourself this dog can't be random just following you and after two times telling it to go away it's not going away. So it means that everything on our path if we are sincere and trying to seek sincerity Everything is under a guidance, everything is something for us to take signs from, from minor to major. 
So it means the seeker is always looking for the signs of Allah Mawlana Shaykh would teach that even in, in the signs of Allah a billboard, you drive and even a license plate may have an inspiration. And programmers know that when they write a program they every now and then put a clue inside the code. For another programmer when he comes to the code he sees a little sort of identity or clue, oh that this programmer was here, this is his mark. And Allah is giving for the seeker, there are signs everywhere and those signs are meant for that individual at that moment, at that time they look, they saw a license plate that its information only meant something for them. Allah knows He wrote that this moment you would look, you would see that number, that information, whatever that sign is and you know its importance and it's only for you to know what that was, a billboard, uh, any type of sign. So it means Allah is all encompassing. The path is all encompassing, Allah didn't leave anything out. When a director makes a movie, he even has the clock on the wall at a specific time that he wants. He doesn't just say, okay well whatever happened just shoot the scene. Every scene, everything in it has an importance. So some people may pick up trivial and, and nonsense things and eventually you learn how to filter those things out onto what's important for your guidance, for your reality. But to know in our belief that Allah when we're taking a path to draw near to His Divinely Presence then there are signs everywhere for those whom are seeking. The more they believe the more these signs begin to appear and they give the servant a yaqeen and a certainty that Allah says, no doubt I've never forgotten you. It's a sign of Allah's love and all-encompassing whom is rightly guided is guided and that guidance has many realities and many secrets within it. Another understanding of the dog is that for us the dog is a, is a creature that is not known for cleanliness, it's what we call najas, un, unclean and the character of a dog that is so extremely loyal but yet it's unclean. And then Allah is describing the immensity of this creature's loyalty for the master. And as a result of its service when the dog said that, I'll serve you, you go for your worshipness. They went to their cave, they went into the cave to become the sleepers of the cave in their state of annihilation and the dog sat at the entrance as a guard and guardian. And Allah described in Ayatul Kareem that had you seen the dog and seen the cave that you would have run from fear, from the immense haiba, a majestic grace that was dressed upon that creature and that cave and that location that would have frightened anyone and they would have run away. And that was the purpose of that creature to be at the door so that people wouldn't wander in and begin to touch the sleepers of the cave in the middle of their worshipness and the miracle that was taking place. As a result of the dog's service Prophet described that that creature was gained entry into paradise. Means that that reality that Allah is giving to the servant is that everybody is capable of being dressed from these realities because when the shaykhs are teaching, people are listening and say, oh yeah this is for like shaykhs and special people to receive these realities and I don't understand how this is going to benefit me. And as we're entering Safar, the holy month of Safar in the cave, the cave is giving its understanding that no everybody everybody is capable because a dog did it. If a dog can do it and Allah can make a dog to reach submission, to reach a, a state of loyalty in which its service and its servanthood was accepted because it lived a life of service. Not because the dog was praying but because he served those whom serve Allah 
because the sleepers were the focus of this and the dog was the one whom served the servants of Allah And so Allah is giving for us the dalil, the, the jurisprudence is that everyone is capable of this. Nobody can say, oh no their sins are many, their, their character is bad, whatever people want to put upon themselves as an excuse not to achieve these realities, Allah says, no a dog did it, you can do it. And as a result, exemplify that character of the dog. So that safar is again the sign in our life that our life is filled with testing. That from this path is going to be many rocks, many tests, many difficulties that come towards us. And the successful one is the one whom perseveres through difficulty. It's not the one whom thinks himself victorious but the one who never gave up through all the testing. Victory with Allah is the one whom is continuously struggling and that's what's important. And they say like a, like a person whom every day is getting up to do experiments on the hopes that one day it'll be the correct formula and he'll achieve success. But it's not thinking that every morning I'm going to wake up everything's going to be fantastic successful and if it's not then I'm a failure. This is a process in which to have patience, this path of haqq and truth it's paved with bricks of patience so that to be consistent, to be patient and continuously persevere through difficulty. And the perseverance of that makes the servant to be dressed with a dress of honour from Allah Every time a difficulty comes to the servant Allah is dressing because Surat Al-Kahf is the formula with haybah. So the servants whom persevere through testing Allah is dressing them with a majestic dress, a might and a majesty is dressing their soul as a result of their perseverance through difficulty walking the path towards the Divinely Presence and that has an immense reality and an immense victory so that we don't think it's only for the special and for the elite. Say, no Allah may have certain servants in which He called them into a specific service. So we can't all be the conductor. So this is not a, a, an orchestra of everyone wants the same job. So it means Allah called somebody and is the conductor. But Allah gave an opportunity is you don't have to be a conductor but you can serve in the orchestra of that conductor and your service will grant you that dress that you're looking for. Allah's might and majesty, Allah's honour and dress upon the servant. Because the dog didn't become Ashab al-Kahf, he served Ashab al-Kahf and that was the importance that Allah is granting. There are some who are murad, they've been called by Allah into service. Not everybody is asking to achieve that station, if I can't have that I don't want anything. But that Allah is granting everybody a position in this orchestra, that everybody play what Allah has given to them of their ability, of their khidmat, of their wealth, of their time, of, of their understanding. If they give that to be of service in the way and they persevere through their difficulty and through their testing. Allah's promise is, I will dress you from a dress of haybah because the dress of haybah is Allah's majestic might. And that's why we said in the last days it's so important this khidmat and service because that's the dress that Allah's giving. This is the dalil, the proof where Allah didn't say that, you know, if you only pray I'm going to dress you with haybah, didn't say that. But he gave the example that the dog and its service had such a haybah that if you looked at it and looked at the cave you would run from fear. 
and from Prophet teachings and the teachings of Allah, it comes again to solidify within our heart a life of khidmat and service has tremendous blessings. And when we serve those whom serve Allah it becomes a finely tuned orchestra in which everyone is doing the best they can do and Allah is dressing everyone, dressing everyone with beautific grace and majesty and haiva. And this is the, the life of importance and this is why the importance of a life of service. Not a life of just, I'm going to do my worshipness because you put your whole account on your worshipness, oh I pray that's enough, thank you guys. But how do you know that your, your praying was accepted by Allah How do you know that your zakat was accepted by Allah How do you know that your Ramadan was accepted by Allah But that which you did from love, how Allah cannot accept it? You don't judge love, say, by love I'm, I'm going to go out and be of service. By love I want to be of service to them transcribe, I want to send the post, I, I want to go out and give food. These are acts of muhabbat and ishq and that's why we teach that, that, that being of service out of love is not something that Allah is going to dress to judge and as a result they put all their, all their hope on their service. Ya Rabbi you may come and cross my amal and think of it as nothing impressive but out of my love I'm being of service, out of that reality Ya Rabbi dress me and bless me from that service. And the khidmat brings immense rahmah and mercy, brings the nazar, the gaze of the prophetic reality upon the soul. Because you're following in the footsteps of the prophetic reality is to serve all creation, to live a life of service. So that that mission can be accomplished, the realities can be propagated, the, the love can be spread and that leaves the sweetness of our lives. The reality of now the cave, so it means everybody has an opportunity to live a life of service, to be dressed by a majestic dress of qitmir. The qitmir in which we call a dog in reality is a lion of the heavens. That a, a dog from Allah's dogs are lions, that they're not a dog from the dunya dog. That when Allah want to send from His dogs it's symbolic of an immense loyal creature. And these are the lions of Allah So throughout the teachings that when Allah is going to send from His loyal creatures they are lions in Allah's way. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us from that reality. As far as the reality of the seven sleepers and the eternal message for our soul means that when we draw our attention to the Satan state of the reality of seven souls in which they give themselves entirely for the Divine the Presence and that not even their movement left and right is in their own, in their own hands. That Allah has seven of these souls at all times upon this earth and their every movement whether they know it or don't know it is by command of Allah They cannot move left and they cannot move right without the command of Allah And the seven souls represent the seven holy openings of the face. Means there's two souls that represent Sami al-Basir, Alim al-Qadir, Alim because one represents knowledge, one represents the state of the breath. Nur al-Hai means it represents the essence of Nur, the essence of al-Hai means that these seven holy openings are being dressed by seven souls and at all times these souls they are being inherited, these seven realities of the holy face 
that they represent Ashab al-Kahf, the depth of Ashab al-Kahf means those whom are the companions of this cave of love that their ishq and muhabbat has gained them such an entry into the cave of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah dresses their soul from one of his essences. Qadr Sami al Basir, Alim al Qadir, Nur al Hayy. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and Muqtadir and the forehead that Al Muqtadir that emanating the reflection of Qadir means that these seven souls have such an access into the heart and the ishq of Prophet that they represent the divine face of Allah. Wajik al kareem that this face of Allah that is reflecting upon the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and that the Muhammadan face Wajik al kareem that dresses these souls and these are seven eternal stations and that there's always a physical representative on this earth that represents these seven awliya. So means there must be seven saints on this earth and each one carrying one of those attributes. One that carries the state of hearing and the perfection of Allah's attribute of hearing, the one who carries the attribute of seeing and the perfection of the state, alim the one whom, who carries the perfection of divine and knowledge. Al-Qadir, Abdul Qadir the one whom carries the perfected state of God's Qudra and power, Nur and Hayy that carries the perfection of Divine Delight from Sifat al-Rahman and Bahr al-Hayy and the ocean of Hayat from Sifat al-Rahim and Al-Muqtadir the one whom emanates the reality of that face and the station of the heart through the holy face. Means these seven essences that are dressing at all times the Divinely face, Allah has dressed that upon these seven souls. And these awliyaullah are on this earth at all times. When one dies, another one will step into that dress and carry that essence upon this earth. The seven sleepers are the reality and the placeholder of that knowledge. Because yet the presence of Prophet had not yet arrived. So means that's when we understand wa ma arsalnaka rahmatan lil alameen that the arrival of the presence of Prophet took away all the imitation and brought all the real. So all the imitated states of realities. When the sultan arrives he represents now the real cave and that the sleepers and ashiqeen because the state of sleep is a state of death but yet they're alive. So it's not the state of seven ghosts, right? Because Prophet was teaching that sleep is death. And if you sleep in a perfection in wudu, your soul is under Arsh rahman So the significance of why not saying the seven dead ones whom are holy souls for eternity but the seven sleepers is a state in which they live this life on this earth as human. But in reality their state of, of fana and their state of marifa. Allah has dressed it like a state of sleep and that's why Allah makes reference to them, had you seen them you think they're awake. So it means to normalize people say, this is just a regular person. But in their marifa and in their nearness to Allah they're like a state of sleep in which they are like dead but they are living on this earth. So means they have a very close proximity to the Divine the Presence. And as a result of these seven are continuously dressing this earth, 
and this reality from the Divinely face that reflecting first from Atiullah to Atiya Rasul. Everything always has to go through Prophet From Atiya Rasul then there are seven Ulul Amr, these seven Ulul Amr that represent Wajik al Kareem, the blessed and divinely face of Sayyidina Muhammad in Allah's attributes. And that becomes the importance of the Asab al Kaf that Ya Rabbi is that we're observing Safar, observing to enter into the cave. Allah is giving to us that this is an eternal position, this is not a story from old. That everybody has an opportunity to be from the lions of Allah male or female, that to be loyal, to be the character of that lion is the servant that is going to persevere, going to be loyal, going to be continuous and persevere upon their path. No matter what difficulties are being sent to them, the dog didn't… if he had changed, why Allah said, felt it and let's test because had he changed maybe later he would have eaten the sleepers or took an advantage of them while they're in their worshipness. Means then the characteristic is what's important because representing a shaykh and representing those whom represent only Allah is not something easy that to be taking advantage of or to, to do inappropriate things. Allah wants the character to be perfected, the character of the one whom is loyal and their character is, is of a perfected nature in which they represent that reality to the best that they can and to the best that they, they have the ability. So then that gives everybody an opportunity that this cave, its entrance is huge. There's nobody that can say, no I can't, yes everybody can, the dog did it, everybody can do it. It's a matter are you willing to do it? And if you're willing to do it then you follow the directions of the schools in which to have good manners, good characteristics, have a sense of loyalty, have a sense of purpose. And as a result this face of the Divine, these seven awliyaullah they will be dressing the servants, they will be dressing and reflecting the light of Sifat al Sami, the one whom hears. When the nazar of the people of the cave means the the lovers of this reality, Ashab means the companions of the Muhammadan love. That's why these, these awliya have overlapping responsibilities. But the ones whom representing these seven essences, when they come to the reality of Ashiqeen, then they are dressing from their soul what Allah has given to these Ashiqeen. So every time you do a service these seven are reflecting their light and the sifat of Allah onto the servant. Means that we are in such a need of each other that nobody can claim it's just me and Allah Allah created an entire hierarchy and each of them with different responsibilities. And that's why the, the school is based on manners, you, you, arrogance and I don't need anyone, well good luck for you, we'll see if any of these souls are going to dress you from anything. The state of humility and good character it opens for us and the shaykh that represents a sami and nobody knows, nobody's going to know who that one is but the good character will lend his soul to dress. Every time one of these ashiqeen go out to be of service, live a life of khidmat, that show, that shaykh, that soul is praying that, Ya Rabbi from what you granted me of the perfection of hearing, grant that soul to have a perfection of hearing, a perfection of seeing, a perfection of knowledge, a perfection of your qadr. Allah's qadr and power is to come to fight against satanic influence to fight against the influence that will change you from good to bad. Because shaitan is not giving up, he's not saying, okay good luck go and you're, you're going to win. But Sifat al-Qadr has to continuously dress the servant with the power to overcome evilness and wickedness. So means then this ishq and love of, 
of recognizing Safar, recognizing the cave, asking to step within the cave has an immense importance. And to take the knowledge of the month of Safar, how many people know that this month of Safar is the opening of Ashab al kahf That which they don't know how they're going to be dressed from it. So means then the immensity of the knowledge in this ilm in which is a tremendous rahmah and mercy. To know it is to be dressed by it. As soon as you're entering into this month you're gaining access to these seven souls and asking Allah make me to be from the companions of this love, this Muhammadan heart and to live a life like Qitmir to be loyal and to serve no matter what being thrown at me not to be disloyal, not to lose my path and my way. And every time a difficulty comes and every time you enter into a service these seven they're dressing, they're dressing and then that face of the Divine is dressing through the reflection. That's what it means to ati Allah, ati Rasulul ulil amri minkum. It's not going to come directly from Allah's face to you. It's not going to come directly from Prophet ﷺ's face to you that you will be just in the face and he'll be dressing you ﷺ directly. But Allah partitioned it to these souls and they will take the command from Allah they will take the command from Prophet ﷺ, they observe the service and the good character and their soul begins to reflect out like mirrors. That's why the one whom is humble and takes a path of humility and has good character, loves and respects everyone then understands the depth of this. So the one whom they think, oh no it's just whatever, they don't understand the importance of, of these awliya, 124,000 on this earth each have different roles. Seven of them represent the Divine the face. So the immensity of their secret, the immensity of their reality, the immensity of what they, they represent of this qudra and this reality. So alhamdulillah that Allah gave us this understandings and this holy month, seven diamonds that have the face of Sayyidina Jibreel and by looking at any one of these seven faces of these awliyaullah you'll be dressed by that reality of that diamond and they are actually the qudra and the power upon this earth. And these are stations, when one passes the next one will take that position and then represent the reality of that power and that qudra and the attribute of Allah And alhamdulillah that reality of that seven then magnifies and brings the reality of their heart and the perfection of this love they have within their heart, their heart becomes a reflection of that cave. And that's what's the importance is that they enter into this cave and this love through this khidmat and this service that the love within the cave and the love that they conceal within their heart begins to reflect the perfection upon their face and the seven attributes that dressing the holy face and so that their face can be a reflection from the face of the Divine wajallah, from the face of Sayyidina Muhammad ajkil kareem. As a result they become inheritors of that reality and those are the people whom Allah described that they feed you not for anything from this world but for the sake of Allah's Divinely face, Wajikal Kareem. These are a category of servants whom trained in this knowledge and that they want to feed and be of service to humanity is what they're asking for is the face of Allah which is this reality that reflects to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and the face of these ulul amn, these mighty souls in which represent this reflection. And they're of service, they live a life of service and they literally go out and try their best to feed humanity. They know that their presence upon the street is that you have to give a food to somebody to bring them in. But the secret is in the food, 
and in the presence of these individuals who represent these faces. When they go out and they give water and food from this state of ishq, the soul of their reality, the reflection of the one whom they love within their heart reflects to all those that they come across. And the, the greatest da'wah is into the stomachs and the well-being of people because how can you talk to somebody when they're hungry? So it means there's a tremendous reality of distributing and blessing people with these teachings and these realities and this life of service. We pray that everybody try to meditate on the importance of this reality, the importance of the symbol of a cave with seven souls and seven essences and that those essences represent the heart of Prophet because the heart and the face are linked. The light within someone's heart reflects to the face because the heart is the sun and the face is the moon. The love that you have in your heart it reflects on your face. The darkness on someone's face is a reflection of how dark and how really bad the heart must be. So it means there's an immense secret of this reflection that this love and this ishq that emanating in the heart of Prophet and that to enter into that cave to keep that love, to keep the training of good character and good manners then Allah begin to dress with these seven holy souls this reality so that the face of the servant can represent the state of the heart and the prophetic heart, the Muhammadan heart inshaAllah subhanahu wa bika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatih. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.